Well, in 1 Samuel, David's on the run. <laughs> He's picked up 400 men that have been unhappy with Saul's kingship, and, and now he's on the run, and he hears about the fact that the Philistines are about to uh, raid, or are raiding Keilah. And uh, you'll see this uh, on the map where uh, Keilah is. He's numbered these events for you on the map. And David does what all of us should do whenever there's a major decision. He asked God, he says, God, should I go down there and fight the men from the Philistines and deliver Keilah? And God says, yes, go. And uh, he goes back to his 400 men and they're afraid to go. They say, we're afraid in Judah, much less down in Keilah, we're against the Philistines. And so David goes back to God and uh, he says, God, you know, my men don't want to go. Uh, is it okay for me to go down there? And God says, yes, I've delivered them into your hands. That all happens in verses 1 through 4 of chapter 23. I hope that you're reading uh, in detail. I can't cover in five minutes uh, some of these chapters uh, without uh, you reading and seeing for yourself. But in any case, uh, in verses 5 through 12, uh, David goes down to Keilah. He delivers them. He defeats the Philistines. And uh, Saul is happy because he says, that, well, Keilah is a neat city. It's got double gates, gate at the one end and the other end, and I've got David trapped in Keilah. Now I'll go down there and kill David. Um, but David hears about Saul's plans, and he does, again, what he should do, taking the ephod, which uh, one of the children that survived the, the terrible holocaust that they went through um, brings down the ephod, and he says to God, God, uh, is Saul coming to get me? And God says, yes, he is. And then he says, God, will Keilah's men and women surrender me to the uh, to Saul and to his forces? And God says, yes, they will. Even though you delivered them, they'll turn you over to the Saul and his men. And so da uh, David and his 600 now, now men, uh, they, they've picked up 200 men, uh, left Keilah, and uh, Saul heard that he had already left Keilah, and so he gives up the chase for a minute or two. And in verse 14, it says that uh, uh, David goes into the wilderness of Ziph. Which again, you'll see all of these cities on your maps, and they're numbered as I've covered them. What do we uh, learn from Saul, all this? Saul I mean, is still looking for David. David, David, uh, David, David, David and Saul playing a run hours, every all time over he turns around. He finds out Saul the nation of Israel. Somebody could tell him the where he, David is. Verse 16 is what's, really what's interesting because why did, why did Jonathan records to David uh, all of this cat and mouse. And he comes to encourage say in one chapter or half a chapter. Do not be afraid. Uh, Saul chased David for Saul X number of years. Saul is not going to get you. Uh, but never did find him. You will be the king catch him of Israel. Well, well that's interesting because he gives us to normally in kingships, obviously, when Saul died, Jonathan would be king. David, uh, Jonathan says, God. no, David, you're going to be David the asked the Lord. And they made a covenant that day. again when he was uncertain. And verse and 18. Man's answers and God's verse answers. Verse 19, we find the Ziphites. And guess uh, what? He took God's come uh, and told Saul right where David is hiding and I think it's very Marsh. important for all of us, uh, no matter what uh, we're going through, no matter there, how old or young we are, Jeff, Jeff we're in doubt. Or even when and, we're not in uh, doubt and we just want to be sure so that we're moving in the Saul right says, direction. Well, good, back we down there and God. make sure exactly where God. he is. And, and uh, I believe that in we'll his trap still him down there voice. and he'll conserve they good down and they uh, what verify have where David is. And just I, I as think Saul God is getting ready to God surround he David hears again. our prayers. Uh, and the Philistines attack in a different area. And Saul has to with circumstances that he finding David so he can defend against the Philistines. We should move ahead and David now moves over to. And that's my thought and today. God bless I you. Am a wonderful day. G E D I. And all of those are on your map. So. Well, how can you be sure you're going to heaven? My son said I should never end a message without telling people how they can be sure they're going to heaven. 
You can find it easily in just a few verses in the book of Romans. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. We all sin every day. By unclean thoughts, a quick answer to someone that's inappropriate, uh, whatever it might be, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. And we know that the wages of sin are death. Romans 6.23 tells us that clearly. The wages of sin are death. We're all guilty of sin and we all deserve death. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's it. That's, that's exactly how God showed his love. He allowed us to see that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died for us and rose again to prove that he had the power over death. Now watch this. How do we obtain this? It's one thing to know it. You can have it here in your head, but not down in your heart. You know, here's how we obtain it. If we confess and believe in our heart, God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And it says believing it's considered righteousness, not our own righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. With our mouth, we confess. And it says, and, and when we confess, it results in salvation. In verse 13, it goes on and says, whoever will call upon the Lord shall be saved. So if you've confessed your sin, said, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for my sins. I'm going to turn from sin and self and to you and to you alone then you can know for certain if you really meant it, really meant it, then you know that you have eternal life in heaven. I hope that you've prayed a prayer similar to that, that you've acknowledged Christ as your Savior, that you've invited him into your life to be your Lord and your Master, that you've turned from sin and self and received him to be the Lord of your life. And that's my prayer for you. Remember, at the end of this clip, there's an opportunity for you to see the last lesson that we had, and also a clip that says how you can have peace in a broken world with the three circle illustration. It's a wonderful witnessing tool to share with others if they don't know Christ as Savior and to see how God fixed a broken world. God bless you and have a great day.